The mathematical concept of a Hilbert space, named after David Hilbert, generalizes the notion of Euclidean space. It extends the methods of vector algebra and calculus from the two-dimensional Euclidean plane and three-dimensional space to spaces with any finite or infinite number of dimensions. A Hilbert space is an abstract vector space possessing the structure of an inner product that allows length and angle to be measured. Furthermore, Hilbert spaces are complete, there are enough limits in the space to allow the techniques of calculus to be used. Hilbert spaces arise naturally and frequently in mathematics and physics, typically as infinite dimensional function spaces. The earliest Hilbert spaces were studied from this point of view in the first decade of the 20th century by David Hilbert, Erich Schmidt, and Frigeis Riesch. They are indispensable tools in the theories of partial differential equations, quantum mechanics, Fourier analysis which includes applications to signal processing and heat transfer, and ergodic theory which forms the mathematical underpinning of thermodynamics. John von Neumann coined the term Hilbert space for the abstract concept that underlies many of these diverse applications. The success of Hilbert space methods ushered in a very fruitful era for functional analysis. Apart from the classical Euclidean spaces, examples of Hilbert spaces include spaces of square integrable functions, spaces of sequences, Sobolev spaces consisting of generalized functions, and Hardy spaces of holomorphic functions. Geometric intuition plays an important role in many aspects of Hilbert space theory. Exact analogues of the Pythagorean theorem and parallelogram law hold in a Hilbert space. At a deeper level, perpendicular projection onto a subspace the analog of dropping the altitude of a triangle plays a significant role in optimization problems and other aspects of the theory. An element of a Hilbert space can be uniquely specified by its coordinates with respect to a set of coordinate axes an orthonormal basis, in analogy with Cartesian coordinates in the plane. When that set of axes is countably infinite, the Hilbert space can also be usefully thought of in terms of the space of infinite sequences that are square summable. The latter space is often in the older literature referred to as the Hilbert space. Linear operators on a Hilbert space are likewise fairly concrete objects, in good cases, they are simply transformations that stretch the space by different factors in mutually perpendicular directions in a sense that is made precise by the study of their spectrum. Topic. Definition and illustration Topic. Motivating example, Euclidean space One of the most familiar examples of a Hilbert space is the Euclidean space consisting of three-dimensional vectors, denoted by three, and equipped with the dot product. The dot product takes two vectors x and y, and produces a real number x, y. If x and y are represented in Cartesian coordinates, then the dot product is defined by x 1 x 2 x 3 y 1 y 2 y 3 equals x 1 y 1 plus x 2 y 2 plus x 3 y 3 Display style begin P matrix x underscore one x underscore two x underscore three end P matrix C D O T begin P matrix Y underscore one Y underscore two Y underscore three end P matrix equals x underscore one Y underscore one plus x underscore two Y underscore two plus x underscore three Y underscore three the dot product satisfies the properties, it is symmetric in x and y, x y equals y x. It is linear in its first argument, ax 1 plus b x 2 y equals ax 1 y plus b x 2 y for any scalars a, b, and vectors x 1, x 2, and y. It is positive definite, for all vectors x, x x 0, with equality if and only if x equals 0, an operation on pairs of vectors that, like the dot product, satisfies these three properties is known as a real inner product. A vector space equipped with such an inner product is known as a real inner product space. 
Every finite dimensional inner product space is also a Hilbert space. The basic feature of the dot product that connects it with Euclidean geometry is that it is related to both the length or norm of a vector, denoted, x, and to the angle θ between two vectors x and y by means of the formula xy equals xy cos θ. Display style math bf x c d o t math bf y equals math bf x math bf y cos theta. Multivariable calculus in Euclidean space relies on the ability to compute limits and to have useful criteria for concluding that limits exist. A mathematical series n equals zero infinity x n display style sum underscore n equals zero caret inf t math bf x underscore n consisting of vectors in three is absolutely convergent provided that the sum of the lengths converges as an ordinary series of real numbers k equals zero infinity x k infinity display style sum underscore k equals zero caret inf t math bf x underscore k just as with a series of scalars, a series of vectors that converges absolutely also converges to some limit vector L in the Euclidean space, in the sense that L minus k equals zero n x k zero as n infinity. Display style left math bf l sum underscore k equals zero carrot n math bf x underscore k right to zero quad text as n to inf t. This property expresses the completeness of Euclidean space that a series that converges absolutely also converges in the ordinary sense. Hilbert spaces are often taken over the complex numbers. The complex plane denoted by is equipped with a notion of magnitude, the complex modulus, z, which is defined as the square root of the product of z with its complex conjugate z 2 equals z z display style z 2 equals z overline z if z equals x plus i y is a decomposition of z into its real and imaginary parts, then the modulus is the usual Euclidean two-dimensional length. Z equals x two plus y two. Display style z equals sqrt x caret two plus y caret two. The inner product of a pair of complex numbers z and w is the product of z with the complex conjugate of w. z w equals z w. Display style Langle z w wrangle equals z overline w. This is complex valued. The real part of z w gives the usual two-dimensional Euclidean dot product. A second example is the space 2 whose elements are pairs of complex numbers z. Topic z1 z2. Then the inner product of z with another such vector w. w1 w2 is given by z w equals z1 W one plus Z two W two Display style Langle Z W wrangle equals Z underscore one overline W underscore one plus Z underscore two overline W underscore two The real part of Z W is then the four dimensional Euclidean dot product. This inner product is Hermitian symmetric, which means that the result of interchanging z and w is the complex conjugate w z equals z w. Display style Langle w z wrangle equals overline Langle z w wrangle. Topic definition. 
A Hilbert space H is a real or complex inner product space that is also a complete metric space with respect to the distance function induced by the inner product. To say that H is a complex inner product space means that H is a complex vector space on which there is an inner product X, Y associating a complex number to each pair of elements X, Y of H that satisfies the following properties. The inner product is conjugate symmetric, that is, the inner product of a pair of elements is equal to the complex conjugate of the inner product of the swapped elements. Y x equals x y display style Langle Y x wrangle equals overline Langle x y wrangle. The inner product is linear in its first argument. For all complex numbers are in B A x 1 plus b x 2 y equals i x 1 y plus b x 2 y Display style Langle x underscore one plus bx underscore two y wrangle equals a Langle x underscore one y wrangle plus b Langle x underscore two y wrangle. The inner product of an element with itself is positive definite x x greater than zero x does not equal zero x x equals zero x equals zero. Display style begin cases Langle x x wrangle greater than zero and x neq zero Langle x x wrangle equals zero and x equals zero end cases. It follows from properties one and two that a complex inner product is conjugate linear in its second argument, meaning that x a y one plus b y two equals a x y one plus b x y two. Display style Langle x i underscore one plus by underscore two wrangle equals bar a Langle x y underscore one wrangle plus bar b Langle x y underscore two wrangle. A real inner product space is defined in the same way, except that H is a real vector space and the inner product takes real values. Such an inner product will be bilinear, that is, linear in each argument. The norm is the real valued function x equals x x display style x equals sqrt langle x x wrangle and the distance d between two points x y and h is defined in terms of the norm by d x y equals x minus y equals x minus y x minus y display style d x y equals x y equals sqrt langle x y x y wrangle that this function is a distance function means firstly that it is symmetric in x and y secondly that the distance between x and itself is zero and otherwise the distance between x and y must be positive and lastly that the triangle inequality holds meaning that the length of one leg of a triangle xyz cannot exceed the sum of the lengths of the other two legs d x z d x y plus d y z display style d x z l e q d x y plus d y z this last property is ultimately a consequence of the more fundamental cauchy schwarz inequality which asserts x y x y Display style BIGL, Langle X, Y, Wrangle, Big R, LEQ, X, Y with equality if and only if X and Y are linearly dependent. With a distance function defined in this way, any inner product space is a metric space, and sometimes is known as a pre-Hilbert space. Any pre-Hilbert space that is additionally also a complete space is a Hilbert space. The completeness of H is expressed using a form of the Cauchy criterion for sequences in H. A pre-Hilbert space H is complete if every Cauchy sequence converges with respect to this norm to an element in the space. 
Completeness can be characterized by the following equivalent condition: if a series of vectors k equals zero infinity u k, display style sum underscore k equals zero caret inf t u underscore k converges absolutely in the sense that k equals zero infinity u k infinity display style sum underscore k equals zero caret inf t u underscore k, then the series converges in H, in the sense that the partial sums converge to an element of H. As a complete normed space, Hilbert spaces are by definition also Banach spaces. As such they are topological vector spaces, in which topological notions like the openness and closedness of subsets are well defined. Of special importance is the notion of a closed linear subspace of a Hilbert space that, with the inner product induced by restriction, is also complete, being a closed set in a complete metric space, and therefore a Hilbert space in its own right. Topic. Second example, sequence spaces The sequence space L2 consists of all infinite sequences Z equals Z1, Z2, of complex numbers such that the series N equals 1 infinity Z N 2 Display style sum underscore n equals one carrot inf t z underscore n carrot two converges. The inner product on L two is defined by z w equals n equals one infinity z n w n Display style Langle Math BF Z Math BF W Wrangle equals sum underscore N equals one carrot inf T Z underscore N overline W underscore N with the latter series converging as a consequence of the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Completeness of the space holds provided that whenever a series of elements from L2 converges absolutely in norm, then it converges to an element of L2. The proof is basic in mathematical analysis, and permits mathematical series of elements of the space to be manipulated with the same ease as series of complex numbers or vectors in a finite dimensional Euclidean space. Topic. History Prior to the development of Hilbert spaces, other generalizations of Euclidean spaces were known to mathematicians and physicists. In particular, the idea of an abstract linear space had gained some traction towards the end of the 19th century. This is a space whose elements can be added together and multiplied by scalars such as real or complex numbers without necessarily identifying these elements with geometric vectors such as position and momentum vectors in physical systems. Other objects studied by mathematicians at the turn of the 20th century, in particular spaces of sequences including series and spaces of functions, can naturally be thought of as linear spaces. Functions, for instance, can be added together or multiplied by constant scalars, and these operations obey the algebraic laws satisfied by addition and scalar multiplication of spatial vectors. In the first decade of the 20th century, parallel developments led to the introduction of Hilbert spaces. The first of these was the observation, which arose during David Hilbert and Erwin Schmidt's study of integral equations, that two square integrable real-valued functions f and g on an interval a, b have an inner product f g equals a b f x g x d x Display style Langle F G Wrangle equals int underscore a carrot B F X G X mathrm D X which has many of the familiar properties of the Euclidean dot product. In particular, the idea of an orthogonal family of functions has meaning. Schmidt exploited the similarity of this inner product with the usual dot product to prove an analog of the spectral decomposition for an operator of the form F X A B K X Y F Y D Y display style F X mapsto int underscore a carrot B K X Y F Y mathrm D Y 
where k is a continuous function symmetric in x and y. The resulting eigenfunction expansion expresses the function k as a series of the form k x y equals n lambda n phi n x phi n y Display style k x y equals sum underscore n lambda underscore n varphi underscore n x varphi underscore n y, where the functions phi n are orthogonal in the sense that phi n phi m equals zero for all n does not equal m. The individual terms in this series are sometimes referred to as elementary product solutions. However, there are eigenfunction expansions that fail to converge in a suitable sense to a square integrable function. The missing ingredient, which ensures convergence, is completeness. The second development was the Lebesgue integral, an alternative to the Riemann integral introduced by Henry Lebesgue in 1904. The Lebesgue integral made it possible to integrate a much broader class of functions. In 1907, Frigge's Riesz and Ernst Sigismund Fischer independently proved that the space L2 of square Lebesgue integrable functions is a complete metric space. As a consequence of the interplay between geometry and completeness, the 19th century results of Joseph Fourier, Friedrich Bessel, and Marc Antoine Parzval on trigonometric series easily carried over to these more general spaces, resulting in a geometrical and analytical apparatus now usually known as the Riesz Fischer theorem. Further basic results were proved in the early 20th century. For example, the Riesz representation theorem was independently established by Maurice Frechet and Frigge's Riesz in 1907. John von Neumann coined the term abstract Hilbert space in his work on unbounded Hermitian operators. Although other mathematicians such as Hermann Weyl and Norbert Wiener had already studied particular Hilbert spaces in great detail, often from a physically motivated point of view, von Neumann gave the first complete and axiomatic treatment of them. Von Neumann later used them in his seminal work on the foundations of quantum mechanics, and in his continued work with Eugene Wigner. The name Hilbert space was soon adopted by others, for example by Hermann Weyl in his book on quantum mechanics and the theory of groups. The significance of the concept of a Hilbert space was underlined with the realization that it offers one of the best mathematical formulations of quantum mechanics. In short, the states of a quantum mechanical system are vectors in a certain Hilbert space, the observables are Hermitian operators on that space, the symmetries of the system are unitary operators, and measurements are orthogonal projections. The relation between quantum mechanical symmetries and unitary operators provided an impetus for the development of the unitary representation theory of groups, initiated in the 1928 work of Hermann Weyl. On the other hand, in the early 1930s it became clear that classical mechanics can be described in terms of Hilbert space Koopman von Neumann classical mechanics and that certain properties of classical dynamical systems can be analyzed using Hilbert space techniques in the framework of ergodic theory. The algebra of observables in quantum mechanics is naturally an algebra of operators defined on a Hilbert space, according to Werner Heisenberg's matrix mechanics formulation of quantum theory. Von Neumann began investigating operator algebras in the 1930s, as rings of operators on a Hilbert space. The kind of algebras studied by von Neumann and his contemporaries are now known as von Neumann algebras. In the 1940s, Israel Gelfand, Mark Neimark and Irving Siegel gave a definition of a kind of operator algebras called C** algebras that on the one hand made no reference to an underlying Hilbert space, and on the other extrapolated many of the useful features of the operator algebras that had previously been studied. The spectral theorem for self-adjoint operators in particular that underlies much of the existing Hilbert space theory was generalized to C** algebras. These techniques are now basic in abstract harmonic analysis and representation theory. Equals. Topic examples. 
equals topic Lebesgue spaces Lebesgue spaces are function spaces associated to measure spaces x m mu where x is a set m is a sigma algebra of subsets of x and mu is a countably additive measure on m let l2 x mu be the space of those complex valued measurable functions on x for which the Lebesgue integral of the square of the absolute value of the function is finite i.e. for a function f in l2 x mu x f 2 d mu infinity display style in underscore x f carrot two mathrm d mu and where functions are identified if and only if they differ only on a set of measure zero. The inner product of functions f and g in L two x mu is then defined as f g equals x f t g t d mu t. Display style wrangle f g wrangle equals int underscore x f t overline g t mathrm d mu t for f and g in L two. This integral exists because of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality and defines an inner product on the space. Equipped with this inner product, L two is in fact complete. The Lebesgue integral is essential to ensure completeness on domains of real numbers. For instance, not enough functions of Riemann integrable. The Lebesgue spaces appear in many natural settings. The spaces L2 and L2 01 of square integrable functions with respect to the Lebesgue measure on the real line and unit interval, respectively, are natural domains on which to define the Fourier transform and Fourier series. In other situations, the measure may be something other than the ordinary Lebesgue measure on the real line. For instance, if W is any positive measurable function, the space of all measurable functions f on the interval 0, 1, satisfying O1, F T, 2 W, T, D T infinity, display style, int underscore, 0, carat 1, B I G L, F T, big R, carat 2, W, T, mathrm, D T is called the weighted L2 space L2 W, 0, 1, and W is called the weight function. The inner product is defined by f g equals o one f t g t w t d t. Display style wrangle f g wrangle equals int underscore zero caret one f t overline g t w t mathrm d t. The weighted space l two w zero one is identical with the Hilbert space l two zero one mu, where the measure mu of a Lebesgue measurable set A is defined by mu A equals a w t d t. Display style mu a equals int underscore a w t mathrm d t weighted L two spaces like this are frequently used to study orthogonal polynomials because different families of orthogonal polynomials are orthogonal with respect to different weighting functions. Topic Sobolev spaces. Sobolev spaces, denoted by H's or W's, too, are Hilbert spaces. These are a special kind of function space in which differentiation may be performed, but that, unlike other Banach spaces such as the Holder spaces, support the structure of an inner product. Because differentiation is permitted, Sobolev spaces are a convenient setting for the theory of partial differential equations. They also form the basis of the theory of direct methods in the calculus of variations. For S a non-negative integer and omega n, the Sobolev space H is omega contains L2 functions whose weak derivatives of order up to S are also L2. The inner product in H is omega is F G equals omega F X G X D x plus omega d f x d g x d x plus plus omega d s f x d s g X D X Display style Langle F G Wrangle equals int underscore Omega F X bar G X Mathrm D X plus int underscore Omega D F X C D O T D bar G X Mathrm D X plus C D O T S plus int underscore Omega D carrot S F X C D O T D carrot S bar G X Mathrm D X 
where the dot indicates the dot product in the Euclidean space of partial derivatives of each order. Sobolev spaces can also be defined when s is not an integer. Sobolev spaces are also studied from the point of view of spectral theory, relying more specifically on the Hilbert space structure. If omega is a suitable domain, then one can define the Sobolev space H as omega as the space of Bessel potentials, roughly H S omega equals one minus delta minus S two F F element of L two Omega display style h caret s omega equals left left one delta caret frac s two f right f in l caret two omega right. Here delta is the Laplacian and one minus delta minus s two is understood in terms of the spectral mapping theorem. Apart from providing a workable definition of Sobolev spaces for non-integer s, this definition also has particularly desirable properties under the Fourier transform that make it ideal for the study of pseudo-differential operators. Using these methods on a compact Riemannian manifold, one can obtain for instance the Hodge decomposition, which is the basis of Hodge theory. Topic: Spaces of holomorphic functions. Topic Hardy spaces The Hardy spaces are function spaces, arising in complex analysis and harmonic analysis, whose elements are certain holomorphic functions in a complex domain. Let U denote the unit disk in the complex plane. Then the Hardy space H2 U, is defined as the space of holomorphic functions f on U such that the means m r f equals 1 2 pi o 2 pi f r e i theta 2 d theta display style m underscore r f equals frac 1 2 pi int underscore 0 carat 2 pi left f left re carat i theta right right carat 2 mathrm d theta remain bounded for r f 2 equals lim r 1 m r f Display style left f right underscore two equals lim underscore r to one sqrt m underscore r f Hardy spaces in the disk are related to Fourier series. A function f is in H two u if and only if f z equals n equals zero infinity a n z n display style f z equals sum underscore n equals zero caret inf t r underscore n z caret n where n equals zero infinity a n two infinity display style sum underscore n equals 0 caret inf t o underscore n caret 2 thus h2 u consists of those functions that are l2 on the circle and whose negative frequency fourier coefficients vanish topic bergman spaces the bergman spaces are another family of hilbert spaces of holomorphic functions let D be a bounded open set in the complex plane or a higher dimensional complex space, and let L2 H, D, be the space of holomorphic functions f in D that are also in L2 D, in the sense that f2 equals D, f z, 2 D mu z infinity, display style, f, carrot 2 equals int underscore D, f z, carrot 2, mathrm D mu z, where the integral is taken with respect to the Lebesgue measure in D clearly L2 H, D, is a subspace of L2 D, in fact, it is a closed subspace, and so a Hilbert space in its own right. This is a consequence of the estimate, valid on compact subsets K of D, that sub Z element of K, F, Z, C K F2, display style, sub underscore Z in K, left, F, Z, right, L E Q C underscore K, left, F, right, underscore 2, which in turn follows from Cauchy's integral formula. Thus convergence of a sequence of holomorphic functions in L2 D implies also compact convergence, and so the limit function is also holomorphic. Another consequence of this inequality is that the linear functional that evaluates a function f at a point of D is actually continuous on L2 H D. The Riesz representation theorem implies that the evaluation functional can be represented as an element of L2 H D. Thus, for every z element of d, there is a function a to z element of L2 H d such that f z equals d f zeta eta z zeta d mu zeta 
display style f z equals int underscore d f zeta overline eta underscore z zeta mathrm d mu zeta for all f element of L two h d the integrand k zeta z equals eta z zeta Display style k zeta z equals overline eta underscore z zeta is known as the Bergman kernel of D. This integral kernel satisfies a reproducing property f z equals d f zeta k zeta z d mu zeta Display style f z equals int underscore d f zeta k zeta z mathrm d mu zeta. A Bergman space is an example of a reproducing kernel Hilbert space, which is a Hilbert space of functions along with a kernel k zeta z that verifies a reproducing property analogous to this one. The Hardy space H two d also admits a reproducing kernel known as the Sego kernel. Reproducing kernels are common in other areas of mathematics as well. For instance, in harmonic analysis the Poisson kernel is a reproducing kernel for the Hilbert space of square integrable harmonic functions in the unit ball. That the latter is a Hilbert space at all is a consequence of the mean value theorem for harmonic functions. Topic. Applications Many of the applications of Hilbert spaces exploit the fact that Hilbert spaces support generalizations of simple geometric concepts like projection and change of basis from their usual finite dimensional setting. In particular, the spectral theory of continuous self-adjoint linear operators on a Hilbert space generalizes the usual spectral decomposition of a matrix, and this often plays a major role in applications of the theory to other areas of mathematics and physics. Topic: Sturm-Liouville theory. In the theory of ordinary differential equations, spectral methods on a suitable Hilbert space are used to study the behavior of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of differential equations. For example, the Sturm-Liouville problem arises in the study of the harmonics of waves in a violin string or a drum, and is a central problem in ordinary differential equations. The problem is a differential equation of the form minus d d x p x d y d x plus q x y equals lambda w x y Display style frac mathrm d mathrm d x left p x frac mathrm d y mathrm d x right plus q x y equals lambda w x y. For an unknown function y on an interval a b satisfying general homogeneous Robin boundary conditions, alpha y a plus alpha y a equals Zero beta y b plus beta y b equals zero. Display style begin cases alpha y a plus alpha y a and equals zero beta y b plus beta y b and equals zero end cases the functions p q and w are given in advance and the problem is to find the function y and constants lambda for which the equation has a solution. The problem only has solutions for certain values of lambda, called eigenvalues of the system, and this is a consequence of the spectral theorem for compact operators applied to the integral operator defined by the Green's function for the system. Furthermore, another consequence of this general result is that the eigenvalues lambda of the system can be arranged in an increasing sequence tending to infinity. Topic. Partial differential equations Q 
Hilbert spaces form a basic tool in the study of partial differential equations. For many classes of partial differential equations, such as linear elliptic equations, it is possible to consider a generalized solution known as a weak solution by enlarging the class of functions. Many weak formulations involve the class of Sobolev functions, which is a Hilbert space. A suitable weak formulation reduces to a geometrical problem the analytic problem of finding a solution or, often what is more important, showing that a solution exists and is unique for given boundary data. For linear elliptic equations, one geometrical result that ensures unique solvability for a large class of problems is the lax milgram theorem. This strategy forms the rudiment of the Galican method, a finite element method for numerical solution of partial differential equations. A typical example is the Poisson equation minus delta U equals G with Dirichlet boundary conditions in a bounded domain omega in 2. The weak formulation consists of finding a function u such that, for all continuously differentiable functions v in omega vanishing on the boundary omega u v equals omega g v display style int underscore omega nabla u c d o t nabla v equals int underscore omega g v this can be recast in terms of the Hilbert space H10 omega consisting of functions u such that u, along with its weak partial derivatives, are square integrable on omega, and vanish on the boundary. The question then reduces to finding u in this space such that for all v in this space a u v equals b v display style a u v equals b v where A is a continuous bilinear form, and B is a continuous linear functional given respectively by A U V equals omega U V B V equals omega G V Display style a u v equals int underscore omega nabla u c d o t nabla v quad b v equals int underscore omega g v. Since the Poisson equation is elliptic, it follows from Poincaré's inequality that the bilinear form a is coercive. The Lax-Milgram theorem then ensures the existence and uniqueness of solutions of this equation. Hilbert spaces allow for many elliptic partial differential equations to be formulated in a similar way, and the Lax-Milgram theorem is then a basic tool in their analysis. With suitable modifications, similar techniques can be applied to parabolic partial differential equations and certain hyperbolic partial differential equations. Topic. Ergodic theory The field of ergodic theory is the study of the long-term behavior of chaotic dynamical systems. The prototypical case of a field that ergodic theory applies to is thermodynamics, in which, though the microscopic state of a system is extremely complicated, it is impossible to understand the ensemble of individual collisions between particles of matter. The average behavior over sufficiently long time intervals is tractable. The laws of thermodynamics are assertions about such average behavior. In particular, one formulation of the zeroth law of thermodynamics asserts that over sufficiently long timescales, the only functionally independent measurement that one can make of a thermodynamic system in equilibrium is its total energy, in the form of temperature. An ergodic dynamical system is one for which, apart from the energy, measured by the Hamiltonian, there are no other functionally independent conserved quantities on the phase space. More explicitly, suppose that the energy E is fixed, and let omega E be the subset of the phase space consisting of all states of energy E, an energy surface, and let TT denote the evolution operator on the phase space. The dynamical system is ergodic if there are no continuous non-constant functions on omega E such that F T T W equals F W Display style f t underscore t w equals f w for all w on omega e and all time t. 
Liouville's theorem implies that there exists a measure mu on the energy surface that is invariant under the time translation. As a result, time translation is a unitary transformation of the Hilbert space L2 omega e, mu, consisting of square integrable functions on the energy surface omega e with respect to the inner product f g L 2 omega e mu equals e f g d mu display style left langle f g right wrangle underscore l caret 2 left omega underscore e mu right equals int underscore e f bar g mathrm d mu the von neumann meinergodic theorem states the following if UT is a strongly continuous one-parameter semigroup of unitary operators on a Hilbert space H, and P is the orthogonal projection onto the space of common fixed points of UT, X element of H, UT X equals X, T greater than zero, then P X equals Lim T infinity one T zero T U T X D T Display style PX equals lim underscore T two inf T frac one T int underscore zero carat T U underscore T X mathrum D T for an ergodic system, the fixed set of the time evolution consists only of the constant functions, so the ergodic theorem implies the following, for any function f element of L2 omega e, mu L 2 minus lim t infinity 1 t 0 t f t T W D T equals Omega E F Y D mu Y Display style underset T two inf T L carrot two lim frac one T int underscore zero carrot T F T underscore T W mathrm D T equals int underscore omega underscore E F Y mathrm D mu Y That is, the long time average of an observable F is equal to its expectation value over an energy surface. Topic Fourier analysis One of the basic goals of Fourier analysis is to decompose a function into a possibly infinite linear combination of given basis functions, the associated Fourier series. The classical Fourier series associated to a function f defined on the interval 0, 1 is a series of the form n equals minus infinity infinity a n e 2 pi i n theta display style sum underscore n equals inf t caret inf t a underscore n e caret 2 pi in theta where a n equals 0 1 f Theta e minus two pi i n theta d theta display style underscore n equals int underscore zero caret one f theta e caret minus two pi in theta mathrm d theta the example of adding up the first few terms in a Fourier series for a sawtooth function is shown in the figure. The basis functions are sine waves with wavelengths lambda n for integer n shorter than the wavelength lambda of the sawtooth itself except for n equals 1, the fundamental wave. All basis functions have nodes at the nodes of the sawtooth, but all but the fundamental have additional nodes. The oscillation of the summed terms about the sawtooth is called the Gibbs phenomenon. 
A significant problem in classical Fourier series asks in what sense the Fourier series converges, if at all, to the function f. Hilbert space methods provide one possible answer to this question. The functions n theta equals e2 pi n theta form an orthogonal basis of the Hilbert space L2, 0, 1. Consequently, any square integrable function can be expressed as a series f theta equals n a n e n theta a n equals f e n display style f theta equals sum underscore n a underscore n e underscore n theta quad underscore n equals langle f e underscore n wrangle and moreover this series converges in the hilbert space sense that is in the l2 mean the problem can also be studied from the abstract point of view. Every Hilbert space has an orthonormal basis, and every element of the Hilbert space can be written in a unique way as a sum of multiples of these basis elements. The coefficients appearing on these basis elements are sometimes known abstractly as the Fourier coefficients of the element of the space. The abstraction is especially useful when it is more natural to use different basis functions for a space such as L2, 0, 1. In many circumstances, it is desirable not to decompose a function into trigonometric functions, but rather into orthogonal polynomials or wavelets for instance, and in higher dimensions into spherical harmonics. For instance, if n are any orthonormal basis functions of L2, 0, 1, then a given function in L2, 0, 1, can be approximated as a finite linear combination f x approximately equals f n x equals a 1 e 1 x plus a 2 e 2 x plus plus a n e n x Display style f x approx f underscore n x equals a underscore one e underscore one x plus a underscore two e underscore two x plus c d o t s plus a underscore n e underscore n x. The coefficients a j are selected to make the magnitude of the difference f minus f n two as small as possible. Geometrically, the best approximation is the orthogonal projection of f onto the subspace consisting of all linear combinations of the ej, and can be calculated by a j equals 0 1 e j x f x d x Display style underscore j equals int underscore zero carrot one overline e underscore j x f x mathrm d x. That this formula minimizes the difference f minus f n two is a consequence of Bessel's inequality and Parseval's formula. In various applications to physical problems, a function can be decomposed into physically meaningful eigenfunctions of a differential operator, typically the Laplace operator. This forms the foundation for the spectral study of functions, in reference to the spectrum of the differential operator. A concrete physical application involves the problem of hearing the shape of a drum. Given the fundamental modes of vibration that a drum head is capable of producing, can one infer the shape of the drum itself? The mathematical formulation of this question involves the Dirichlet eigenvalues of the Laplace equation in the plane, that represent the fundamental modes of vibration in direct analogy with the integers that represent the fundamental modes of vibration of the violin string. Spectral theory also underlies certain aspects of the Fourier transform of a function. Whereas Fourier analysis decomposes a function defined on a compact set into the discrete spectrum of the Laplacian which corresponds to the vibrations of a violin string or drum, the Fourier transform of a function is the decomposition of a function defined on all of Euclidean space into its components in the continuous spectrum of the Laplacian. The Fourier transformation is also geometrical, in a sense made precise by the Planchel theorem, that asserts that it is an isometry of one Hilbert space the time domain with another the 
frequency domain. This isometry property of the Fourier transformation is a recurring theme in abstract harmonic analysis, as evidenced for instance by the Plantral theorem for spherical functions occurring in noncommutative harmonic analysis. Topic. Quantum mechanics In the mathematically rigorous formulation of quantum mechanics, developed by John von Neumann, the possible states more precisely, the pure states of a quantum mechanical system are represented by unit vectors called state vectors residing in a complex separable Hilbert space, known as the state space, well defined up to a complex number of norm 1 the phase factor. In other words, the possible states are points in the projectivization of a Hilbert space, usually called the complex projective space. The exact nature of this Hilbert space is dependent on the system, for example, the position and momentum states for a single non-relativistic spin zero particle is the space of all square integrable functions, while the states for the spin of a single proton are unit elements of the two-dimensional complex Hilbert space of spinners. Each observable is represented by a self-adjoint linear operator acting on the state space. Each eigenstate of an observable corresponds to an eigenvector of the operator, and the associated eigenvalue corresponds to the value of the observable in that eigenstate. The inner product between two state vectors is a complex number known as a probability amplitude. During an ideal measurement of a quantum mechanical system, the probability that a system collapses from a given initial state to a particular eigenstate is given by the square of the absolute value of the probability amplitudes between the initial and final states. The possible results of a measurement are the eigenvalues of the operator—which explains the choice of self-adjoint operators, for all the eigenvalues must be real. The probability distribution of an observable in a given state can be found by computing the spectral decomposition of the corresponding operator. For a general system, states are typically not pure, but instead are represented as statistical mixtures of pure states, or mixed states, given by density matrices, self-adjoint operators of trace 1 on a Hilbert space. Moreover, for general quantum mechanical systems, the effects of a single measurement can influence other parts of a system in a manner that is described instead by a positive operator valued measure. Thus the structure both of the states and observables in the general theory is considerably more complicated than the idealization for pure states. Topic: <laughs> Color perception. Any true physical color can be represented by a combination of pure spectral colors. As physical colors can be composed of any number of spectral colors, the space of physical colors may aptly be represented by a Hilbert space over spectral colors. Humans have three types of cone cells for color perception, so the perceivable colors can be represented by three-dimensional Euclidean space. The many-to-one linear mapping from the Hilbert space of physical colors to the Euclidean space of human perceivable colors explains why many distinct physical colors may be perceived by humans to be identical e.g., pure yellow light versus a mix of red and green light, see metamerism. <laughs> Properties Topic. Pythagorean identity Two vectors u and v in a Hilbert space H are orthogonal when u, v equals zero. The notation for this is uv, more generally, when s is a subset in H, the notation us means that u is orthogonal to every element from s. When u and v are orthogonal, one has u plus v two equals u plus v u plus v equals u u plus 2 re u v plus v v equals u 2 plus V two 
Display style U plus V carrot two equals Langle U plus V U plus V Wrangle equals Langle U U Wrangle plus two operator name re Langle U V Wrangle plus Langle V V Wrangle equals U carrot two plus V carrot two by induction on n, this is extended to any family u1, un of n orthogonal vectors u1 plus plus u n 2 equals u1 2 plus plus u n 2 Display style U underscore one plus C D O T S plus U underscore N carrot two equals U underscore one carrot two plus C D O T S plus U underscore N carrot two. Whereas the Pythagorean identity as stated is valid in any inner product space, completeness is required for the extension of the Pythagorean identity to series. A series UK of orthogonal vectors converges in H if and only if the series of squares of norms converges, and K equals zero infinity U K two equals K equals zero infinity U K two Display style left sum underscore k equals zero carrot inf t u underscore k right carrot two equals sum underscore k equals zero carrot inf t left u underscore k right carrot two. Furthermore, the sum of a series of orthogonal vectors is independent of the order in which it is taken. Topic: Parallelogram identity and polarization. By definition, every Hilbert space is also a Banach space. Furthermore, in every Hilbert space the following parallelogram identity holds U plus V 2 plus U minus V 2 equals 2 U 2 plus V two display style u plus v carrot two plus u v carrot two equals two left u carrot two plus v carrot two right. Conversely, every Banach space in which the parallelogram identity holds is a Hilbert space, and the inner product is uniquely determined by the norm by the polarization identity. For real Hilbert spaces, the polarization identity is u. V equals one four U plus V two minus U minus V two Display style Langle U V Wrangle equals frac one four left U plus V carrot two U V carrot two right for complex Hilbert spaces, it is U V equals one four U plus V two minus U minus V two plus I U plus I V two minus I U minus I V two Display style Langle U V Wrangle equals T F R A C one four left U plus V carrot two U V carrot two plus I U plus I V carrot two I U I V carrot two right the parallelogram law implies that any Hilbert space is a uniformly convex Banach space. Topic: Best approximation. This subsection employs the Hilbert projection theorem. 
If C is a non-empty closed convex subset of a Hilbert space H and X a point in H, there exists a unique point Y element of C that minimizes the distance between X and points in C. Y element of C X minus Y equals dist X C equals min X minus Z Z element of C Display style y in C quad x y equals operator name dist x C equals min x z z in C. This is equivalent to saying that there is a point with minimal norm in the translated convex set D equals C minus x. The proof consists in showing that every minimizing sequence D and D is Cauchy using the parallelogram identity, hence converges using completeness to a point in D that has minimal norm. More generally, this holds in any uniformly convex Banach space. When this result is applied to a closed subspace F of H, it can be shown that the point Y element of F closest to X is characterized by Y element of F X minus Y F display style Y in F quad X Y perp F. This point y is the orthogonal projection of x onto f, and the mapping pf, xy is linear, see orthogonal complements and projections. This result is especially significant in applied mathematics, especially numerical analysis, where it forms the basis of least squares methods, in particular, when f is not equal to h, one can find a non-zero vector v orthogonal to f, select x f and v equals x minus y. A very useful criterion is obtained by applying this observation to the closed subspace F generated by a subset S of H. A subset S of H spans a dense vector subspace if, and only if, the vector 0 is the sole vector V element of H orthogonal to S. Topic. Duality The dual space H asterisk is the space of all continuous linear functions from the space H into the base field. It carries a natural norm, defined by phi equals sup x equals 1 x element of H phi x Display style var phi equals sub underscore x equals one x in H var phi x. This norm satisfies the parallelogram law, and so the dual space is also an inner product space. The dual space is also complete, and so it is a Hilbert space in its own right. The Riesz representation theorem affords a convenient description of the dual. To every element u of H, there is a unique element phi u of H asterisk defined by phi u x equals x u display style var phi underscore u x equals langle x u wrangle the mapping u phi u is an antilinear mapping from h to h asterisk the Riesz representation theorem states that this mapping is an antilinear isomorphism Thus to every element phi of the dual H asterisk there exists one and only one U phi in H such that X U phi equals phi X display style Langle X U underscore var phi wrangle equals var phi X for all X in H. The inner product on the dual space H asterisk satisfies phi psi equals u psi u phi display style langle var phi psi wrangle equals langle u underscore psi u underscore var phi wrangle the reversal of order on the right hand side restores linearity in phi from the antilinearity of u phi in the real case, the antilinear isomorphism from H to its dual is actually an isomorphism, and so real Hilbert spaces are naturally isomorphic to their own duals. The representing vector U phi is obtained in the following way. When phi does not equal zero, the kernel F 
Topic Kerr phi is a closed vector subspace of H, not equal to H. Hence, there exists a non-zero vector v orthogonal to f. The vector u is a suitable scalar multiple lambda v of v. The requirement that phi v v u yields u equals v v minus one phi v v display style u equals langle v v wrangle caret minus one overline bar phi v v this correspondence phi left right arrow u is exploited by the bracket notation popular in physics it is common in physics to assume that the inner product denoted by x y is linear on the right x y equals y x display style langle x y wrangle equals langle y x wrangle the result x y can be seen as the action of the linear functional x the bra on the vector y the ket the Riesz representation theorem relies fundamentally not just on the presence of an inner product but also on the completeness of the space in fact, the theorem implies that the topological dual of any inner product space can be identified with its completion. An immediate consequence of the Riesz representation theorem is also that a Hilbert space H is reflexive, meaning that the natural map from H into its double dual space is an isomorphism. Topic: Weakly convergent sequences. In a Hilbert space H, a sequence Xn is weakly convergent to a vector X element of H when lim n x n v equals x v display style lim underscore n langle x underscore n v wrangle equals langle x v wrangle for every v element of H. For example, any orthonormal sequence Fn converges weakly to zero, as a consequence of Bessel's inequality. Every weakly convergent sequence Xn is bounded, by the uniform boundedness principle. Conversely, every bounded sequence in a Hilbert space admits weakly convergent subsequences Aulus theorem. This fact may be used to prove minimization results for continuous convex functionals, in the same way that the bolzano weierstrass theorem is used for continuous functions on D. Among several variants, one simple statement is as follows. If f h is a convex continuous function such that f x tends to plus infinity when x tends to infinity, then f admits a minimum at some point x zero element of h. This fact and its various generalizations are fundamental for direct methods in the calculus of variations. Minimization results for convex functionals are also a direct consequence of the slightly more abstract fact that closed, bounded convex subsets in a Hilbert space h are weakly compact, since h is reflexive. The existence of weakly convergent subsequences is a special case of the eberlein smullyan theorem. Topic: Banach space properties. Any general property of Banach spaces continues to hold for Hilbert spaces. The open mapping theorem states that a continuous surjective linear transformation from one Banach space to another is an open mapping meaning that it sends open sets to open sets. A corollary is the bounded inverse theorem, that a continuous and bijective linear function from one Banach space to another is an isomorphism that is, a continuous linear map whose inverse is also continuous. This theorem is considerably simpler to prove in the case of Hilbert spaces than in general Banach spaces. The open mapping theorem is equivalent to the closed graph theorem, which asserts that a function from one Banach space to another is continuous if and only if its graph is a closed set. In the case of Hilbert spaces, this is basic in the study of unbounded operators see closed operator. The geometrical Hahn-Banach theorem asserts that a closed convex set can be separated from any point outside it by means of a hyperplane of the Hilbert space. 
This is an immediate consequence of the best approximation property. If y is the element of a closed convex set f closest to x, then the separating hyperplane is the plane perpendicular to the segment xy passing through its midpoint. Topic: <laughs> Operators on Hilbert spaces. Topic. Bounded operators The continuous linear operators are, H1 H2 from a Hilbert space H1 to a second Hilbert space H2 are bounded in the sense that they map bounded sets to bounded sets. Conversely, if an operator is bounded, then it is continuous. The space of such bounded linear operators has a norm, the operator norm given by a equals sub a x x one display style l vert a r vert equals sub left l vert x r vert l vert x r vert l e q one right. The sum and the composite of two bounded linear operators is again bounded and linear. For y in H two, the map that sends x element of H one to x y is linear and continuous, and according to the Riesz representation theorem, can therefore be represented in the form x a y equals a x y. Display style left Langle x a caret asterisk y right Langle equals Langle x y Langle for some vector a asterisk y in h1 this defines another bounded linear operator a asterisk h to h1 the adjoint of a1 can see that a asterisk asterisk equals a the set b h of all bounded linear operators on h operators h h together with the addition and composition operations the norm and the adjoint operation is a c asterisk algebra which is a type of operator algebra an element of a b h is called self-adjoint or permission if a asterisk. Topic a if a is Hermitian and x x zero for every x, then a is called non-negative. Written a zero if equality holds only when x zero, then a is called positive. The set of self-adjoint operators admits a partial order, in which a b if a minus b zero. If it has the form b asterisk b for some b, then a is non-negative, if b is invertible, then a is positive. A converse is also true in the sense that, for a non-negative operator a, there exists a unique non-negative square root b such that a equals b 2 equals b B display style a equals b caret two equals b caret asterisk b. In a sense made precise by the spectral theorem, self-adjoint operators can usefully be thought of as operators that are real. An element a of b h is called normal if a asterisk a equals double a asterisk. Normal operators decompose into the sum of a self-adjoint operators and an imaginary multiple of a self-adjoint operator a equals a plus a 2 plus i a minus a 2 i display style equals frac a plus a caret asterisk 2 plus i frac a a caret asterisk 2 i that commute with each other Normal operators can also usefully be thought of in terms of their real and imaginary parts. An element U of B H is called unitary if U is invertible and its inverse is given by U asterisk. This can also be expressed by requiring that U be onto a new X, U Y equals X, Y for all X, Y element of H. The unitary operators form a group under composition, which is the isometry group of H. An element of B H is compact if it sends bounded sets to relatively compact sets. Equivalently, a bounded operator T is compact if, for any bounded sequence x k, the sequence T x k has a convergent subsequence. 
Many integral operators are compact, and in fact define a special class of operators known as Hilbert-Schmidt operators that are especially important in the study of integral equations. Friedholm operators differ from a compact operator by a multiple of the identity, and are equivalently characterized as operators with a finite dimensional kernel and co-kernel. The index of a Friedholm operator T is defined by index T equals dim ker T minus dim coca T display style operator name index T equals dim ker T dim operator name coca T the index is homotopy invariant and plays a deep role in differential geometry via the Atiyah Singer index theorem Topic. Unbounded operators Unbounded operators are also tractable in Hilbert spaces, and have important applications to quantum mechanics. An unbounded operator T on a Hilbert space H is defined as a linear operator whose domain D T is a linear subspace of H. Often the domain D T is a dense subspace of H, in which case T is known as a densely defined operator. The adjoint of a densely defined unbounded operator is defined in essentially the same manner as for bounded operators. Self-adjoint unbounded operators play the role of the observables in the mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics. Examples of self-adjoint unbounded operators on the Hilbert space L2 are These correspond to the momentum and position observables, respectively. Note that neither A nor B is defined on all of H, since in the case of A the derivative need not exist, and in the case of B the product function need not be square integrable. In both cases, the set of possible arguments form dense subspaces of L2. Topic. Constructions Topic. Direct sums Two Hilbert spaces H1 and H2 can be combined into another Hilbert space, called the orthogonal direct sum, and denoted H1 H2 display style H underscore 1 O plus H underscore 2 Consisting of the set of all ordered pairs x1, x2, where she element of high i equals 1, 2, and inner product defined by x1, x2, y1, y2, h1, h2 equals x1 y 1 h 1 plus x 2 y 2 h 2 Display style B I G L Langle X underscore one X underscore two Y underscore one Y underscore two Big R Wrangle underscore H underscore one O plus H underscore two equals left Langle X underscore one Y underscore one right Wrangle underscore H underscore one plus left Langle X underscore two Y underscore two right Wrangle underscore H underscore two more generally, if high is a family of Hilbert spaces indexed by i element of i, then the direct sum of the high, denoted i element of i h i display style big O plus underscore i in i h underscore i consists of the set of all indexed families x equals x i element of h i i element of i element of i element of i h i display style x equals x underscore i in h underscore i i in i in prod underscore i in i h underscore i in the Cartesian product of the high such that i element of i x x i two infinity display style sum underscore i in i x underscore i caret two. The inner product is defined by x y equals i element of i x i y i h i 
Display style Langle X, Y, Wrangle equals some underscore I in I left, Langle X underscore I, Y underscore I right, Wrangle underscore H underscore I Each of the high is included as a closed subspace in the direct sum of all of the high. Moreover, the high are pairwise orthogonal. Conversely, if there is a system of closed subspaces, VI, I element of I, in a Hilbert space H, that are pairwise orthogonal and whose union is dense in H, then H is canonically isomorphic to the direct sum of VI. In this case, H is called the internal direct sum of the VI. A direct sum internal or external, is also equipped with a family of orthogonal projections A onto the ith direct sum and HI. These projections are bounded, self-adjoint, idempotent operators that satisfy the orthogonality condition E I E J equals zero I does not equal J. Display style E underscore I E underscore J equals zero quad I N E Q J the spectral theorem for compact self-adjoint operators on a Hilbert space H states that H splits into an orthogonal direct sum of the eigenspaces of an operator, and also gives an explicit decomposition of the operator as a sum of projections onto the eigenspaces. The direct sum of Hilbert spaces also appears in quantum mechanics as the Fock space of a system containing a variable number of particles, where each Hilbert space in the direct sum corresponds to an additional degree of freedom for the quantum mechanical system. In representation theory, the Peter Weyl theorem guarantees that any unitary representation of a compact group on a Hilbert space splits as the direct sum of finite dimensional representations. Topic. Tensor products If x1, y1, h1 and x2, y2, h2, then one defines an inner product on the ordinary tensor product as follows. On simple tensors, let x1 x2 y1 y2 equals X one Y one X two Y two Display style Langle x underscore one O times x underscore two Y underscore one O times Y underscore two Wrangle equals Langle x underscore one Y underscore one Wrangle Langle x underscore two Y underscore two Wrangle this formula then extends by sesquilinearity to an inner product on H1 H2. The Hilbertian tensor product of H1 and H2, sometimes denoted by H1, caret display style white hat O times H2, is the Hilbert space obtained by completing H1 H2 for the metric associated to this inner product. An example is provided by the Hilbert space L2 0 1. The Hilbertian tensor product of two copies of L2, 0, 1, is isometrically and linearly isomorphic to the space L2, 0, 1, 2, of square integrable functions on the square, 0, 1, 2. This isomorphism sends a simple tensor F1 F2 to the function S T F 1 S F 2 T Display style S T max to F underscore one S F underscore two T on the square. This example is typical in the following sense. Associated to every simple tensor product x1 x2 is the rank 1 operator from h1 to h2 that maps a given x asterisk element of h1 as x x x one x Two. Display style x caret asterisk maps to x caret asterisk x underscore one x underscore two. This mapping defined on simple tensors extends to a linear identification between H one H two and the space of finite rank operators from H one to H two. This extends to a linear isometry of the Hilbertian tensor product H one caret display style white hat O times H2 with the Hilbert space HS H1 H2 of Hilbert Schmidt operators from H1 to H2. Topic: 
Topic: Orthonormal bases. The notion of an orthonormal basis from linear algebra generalizes over to the case of Hilbert spaces. In a Hilbert space H, an orthonormal basis is a family ek, k element of B of elements of H satisfying the conditions orthogonality, every two different elements of B are orthogonal, ek, e j equals zero for all k, j element of B with k does not equal j. Normalization, every element of the family has norm 1, ek, equals 1 for all k in B. Completeness, the linear span of the family ek, k element of B, is dense in H. A system of vectors satisfying the first two conditions basis is called an orthonormal system or an orthonormal set or an orthonormal sequence if B is countable. Such a system is always linearly independent. Completeness of an orthonormal system of vectors of a Hilbert space can be equivalently restated as if V ek topic zero for all k in B and some V element of H then V zero. This is related to the fact that the only vector orthogonal to a dense linear subspace is the zero vector, for if S is any orthonormal set and V is orthogonal to S, then V is orthogonal to the closure of the linear span of S, which is the whole space. Examples of orthonormal bases include the set 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 forms an orthonormal basis of 3 with the dot product. The sequence fn n element of with fn x equals exp 2 pi i n x forms an orthonormal basis of the complex space L2 0 1 in the infinite dimensional case an orthonormal basis will not be a basis in the sense of linear algebra to distinguish the two the latter basis is also called a Hamel basis that the span of the basis vectors is dense implies that every vector in the space can be written as the sum of an infinite series, and the orthogonality implies that this decomposition is unique. Equals. Topic sequence spaces equals the space L2 of square summable sequences of complex numbers is the set of infinite sequences C1, C2, C3, display style C underscore 1, C underscore 2, C underscore 3, dots of complex numbers such that C1, 2 plus, C2, 2 plus, C3, 2 plus infinity. Display style left C underscore one right carrot two plus left C underscore two right carrot two plus left C underscore three right carrot two plus C D O T S. This space has an orthonormal basis, E1 equals 1, 0, 0, E2 equals 0, 1, 0, display style, begin aligned E underscore 1 and equals 1, 0, 0, dots, E underscore 2 and equals 0, 1, 0, dots, and VDOTS, end aligned. More generally, if B is any set, then one can form a Hilbert space of sequences with index set B, defined by L2, B equals X, BXC, B element of B, XB. 2 infinity display style l caret 2 b equals left x b x right arrow x math bound c left sum underscore b in b left x b right caret 2 the summation over b is here defined by b element of b x b 2 equals sub n equals 1 n x b n 2 display style sum underscore b in b left x b right caret 2 equals sub sum underscore n equals 1 caret n left x b underscore n right caret 2, the supremum being taken over all finite subsets of B. It follows that, for this sum to be finite, every element of L2 B, has only countably many non-zero terms. This space becomes a Hilbert space with the inner product x, y equals b element of bx b, y b, display style, langle x, y, wrangle equals, sum underscore, b, in b x, b overline, y, b, for all x, y element of L2 B. Here the sum also has only countably many non-zero terms, and is unconditionally convergent by the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. An orthonormal basis of L2 B is indexed by the set B, given by E B, B equals 1 if B equals B, 0 otherwise. Display style E underscore B left B right equals begin cases 1 and text if B equals B, 0 and text otherwise. End cases. Topic. Bessel's inequality and Parseval's formula 
lit f1 fn be a finite orthonormal system in h for an arbitrary vector x element of h let y equals j equals 1 n x f j f j Display style y equals sum underscore j equals one carrot n langle x f underscore j wrangle f underscore j. Then x f k. Topic y f k for every k. One n. It follows that x minus y is orthogonal to each f k. Hence x minus y is orthogonal to y. Using the Pythagorean identity twice, it follows that x two equals x minus y two plus y two y two equals j equals one n x F J two Display style x carrot two equals x y carrot two plus y carrot two G E Q Y carrot two equals sum underscore J equals one carrot N B I G L Langle X F underscore J Wrangle Big R carrot two Let Phi I element of I be an arbitrary orthonormal system in H Applying the preceding inequality to every finite subset J of I gives the Bessel inequality I element of I x f I two x two x element of H Display style sum underscore i in i b i g l langle x f underscore i wrangle big r carrot two l e q x carrot two quad x in h. According to the definition of the sum of an arbitrary family of non-negative real numbers, geometrically, Bessel's inequality implies that the orthogonal projection of x onto the linear subspace spanned by the phi has norm that does not exceed that of x. In two dimensions, this is the assertion that the length of the leg of a right triangle may not exceed the length of the hypotenuse. Bessel's inequality is a stepping stone to the more powerful Parseval identity, which governs the case when Bessel's inequality is actually an equality. If x k element of B is an orthonormal basis of H, then every element x of H may be written as x equals k element of B x e k e k display style x equals sum underscore k in B left langle x e underscore k right wrangle e underscore k even if B is uncountable Bessel's inequality guarantees that the expression is well defined and consists only of countably many non-zero terms. This sum is called the Fourier expansion of x, and the individual coefficients x, x are the Fourier coefficients of x. Parseval's formula is then x 2 equals k element of b x e k 2 Display style x carrot two equals sum underscore k in B Langle x E underscore K Wrangle carrot two. Conversely, if x is an orthonormal set such that Parseval's identity holds for every x, then x is an orthonormal basis. Topic Hilbert dimension. As a consequence of Zorn's lemma, every Hilbert space admits an orthonormal basis. Furthermore, any two orthonormal bases of the same space have the same cardinality, called the Hilbert dimension of the space. For instance, since L2 B has an orthonormal basis indexed by B, its Hilbert dimension is the cardinality of B, which may be a finite integer, or a countable or uncountable cardinal number. 
As a consequence of Parseval's identity, if ek k element of B is an orthonormal basis of H, then the map phi HL2 B defined by phi x equals x ek k element of B is an isometric isomorphism of Hilbert spaces. It is a bijective linear mapping such that phi x phi y l 2 b equals x y h display style b i g l langle phi x phi y vigar wrangle underscore l caret 2 b equals left langle x y right wrangle underscore h for all x y element of h the cardinal number of B is the Hilbert dimension of H thus every Hilbert space is isometrically isomorphic to a sequence space L2 B for some set B. Topic: <laughs> Separable spaces. A Hilbert space is separable if and only if it admits a countable orthonormal basis. All infinite dimensional separable Hilbert spaces are therefore isometrically isomorphic to L2. In the past, Hilbert spaces were often required to be separable as part of the definition. Most spaces used in physics are separable, and since these are all isomorphic to each other, one often refers to any infinite dimensional separable Hilbert space as the Hilbert space, or just Hilbert space. Even in quantum field theory, most of the Hilbert spaces are in fact separable, as stipulated by the Whiteman axioms. However, it is sometimes argued that non-separable Hilbert spaces are also important in quantum field theory, roughly because the systems in the theory possess an infinite number of degrees of freedom and any infinite Hilbert tensor product of spaces a dimension greater than one is non-separable. For instance, a bosonic field can be naturally thought of as an element of a tensor product whose factors represent harmonic oscillators at each point of space. From this perspective, the natural state space of a boson might seem to be a non-separable space. However, it is only a small separable subspace of the full tensor product that can contain physically meaningful fields on which the observables can be defined. Another non-separable Hilbert space models the state of an infinite collection of particles in an unbounded region of space. An orthonormal basis of the space is indexed by the density of the particles, a continuous parameter, and since the set of possible densities is uncountable, the basis is not countable. Topic: <laughs> Orthogonal complements and projections. If S is a subset of a Hilbert space H, the set of vectors orthogonal to S is defined by S equals X element of H X S equals zero S element of S. Display style s caret perp equals left x in h langle x s wrangle equals zero for all s in s right. S is a closed subspace of H can be proved easily using the linearity and continuity of the inner product, and so forms itself a Hilbert space. If V is a closed subspace of H, then V is called the orthogonal complement of V. In fact, every x element of H can then be written uniquely as x equals v plus w, with v element of v and w element of v. Therefore, H is the internal Hilbert direct sum of v and v. The linear operator p v h h that maps x to v is called the orthogonal projection onto v. There is a natural one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of all closed subspaces of h and the set of all bounded self-adjoint operators p such that p two equals p specifically theorem. The orthogonal projection P V is a self-adjoint linear operator on H of norm 1 with the property P2 V. P V. Moreover, any self-adjoint linear operator E such that E2 E is of the form P V, where V is the range of E for every X in H, P V X is the unique element V of V that minimizes the distance, X minus V, this provides the geometrical interpretation of P V X, it is the best approximation to X by elements of V. 
Projections PU and PV are called mutually orthogonal if PU PV. Topic zero. This is equivalent to U and V being orthogonal as subspaces of H. The sum of the two projections PU and PV is a projection only if U and V are orthogonal to each other, and in that case PU plus PV. PU plus V. The composite PU PV is generally not a projection, in fact, the composite is a projection if and only if the two projections commute, and in that case PU PV equals PU V. By restricting the codomain to the Hilbert space V, the orthogonal projection PV gives rise to a projection mapping pi H V. It is the adjoint of the inclusion mapping I V H display style I V to H, meaning that I X Y H equals X pi Y V display style left Langle X Y right wrangle underscore H equals left Langle X pi Y right wrangle underscore V for all X in V and Y element of H. The operator norm of the orthogonal projection P V onto a non-zero closed subspace V is equal to one P V equals sub X Element of H X does not equal zero P V X X equals one. Display style P underscore V equals sub underscore X in H X not equals zero frac P underscore V X X equals one. Every closed subspace V of a Hilbert space is therefore the image of an operator P of norm 1 such that P2 equals P. The property of possessing appropriate projection operators characterizes Hilbert spaces. A Banach space of dimension higher than 2 is isometrically a Hilbert space if and only if, for every closed subspace V, there is an operator P V of norm 1 whose image is V such that P2 V equals P V. While this result characterizes the metric structure of a Hilbert space, the structure of a Hilbert space as a topological vector space can itself be characterized in terms of the presence of complementary subspaces. A Banach space X is topologically and linearly isomorphic to a Hilbert space if and only if, to every closed subspace V, there is a closed subspace W such that X is equal to the internal direct sum V W. The orthogonal complement satisfies some more elementary results. It is a monotone function in the sense that if U V, then V U with a quality holding if and only if V is contained in the closure of U. This result is a special case of the hahn banach theorem. The closure of a subspace can be completely characterized in terms of the orthogonal complement. If V is a subspace of H, then the closure of V is equal to V. The orthogonal complement is thus a Galois connection on the partial order of subspaces of a Hilbert space. In general, the orthogonal complement of a sum of subspaces is the intersection of the orthogonal complements I V I equals I V I display style left sum underscore I V underscore I right carrot perp equals big cap underscore I V underscore I carrot perp. If the V I are in addition closed, then I V I equals I V I display style overline sum underscore I V underscore I carrot perp equals left big cap underscore I V underscore I right carrot perp. Topic: Spectral theory. There is a well-developed spectral theory for self-adjoint operators in a Hilbert space, that is roughly analogous to the study of symmetric matrices over the reals or self-adjoint matrices over the complex numbers. In the same sense, one can obtain a diagonalization of a self-adjoint operator as a suitable sum actually an integral of orthogonal projection operators. 
The spectrum of an operator T, denoted sigma T, is the set of complex numbers λ such that T minus λ lacks a continuous inverse. If T is bounded, then the spectrum is always a compact set in the complex plane, and lies inside the disk, Z, T. If T is self-adjoint, then the spectrum is real. In fact, it is contained in the interval M, M, where M equals INF X equals 1 T X X M equals sub X equals 1 T X X Display style M equals INF underscore X equals one Langle TX X Wrangle quad M equals sub underscore X equals one Langle TX X Wrangle. Moreover, M and M are both actually contained within the spectrum. The eigenspaces of an operator T are given by H Lambda equals Kerr T minus Lambda Display style h underscore lambda equals cur t lambda. Unlike with finite matrices, not every element of the spectrum of t must be an eigenvalue. The linear operator t minus lambda may only lack an inverse because it is not surjective. Elements of the spectrum of an operator in the general sense are known as spectral values. Since spectral values need not be eigenvalues, the spectral decomposition is often more subtle than in finite dimensions. However, the spectral theorem of a self-adjoint operator T takes a particularly simple form if, in addition, T is assumed to be a compact operator. The spectral theorem for compact self-adjoint operators states, A compact self-adjoint operator T has only countably or finitely, many spectral values. The spectrum of T has no limit point in the complex plane except possibly zero. The eigenspaces of T decompose H into an orthogonal direct sum H equals lambda element of sigma T H lambda display style H equals big O plus underscore lambda in sigma T H underscore lambda moreover if E lambda denotes the orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace H lambda then T equals lambda element of sigma T lambda E lambda display style T equals sum underscore lambda in sigma T lambda E underscore lambda where the sum converges with respect to the norm on B H, this theorem plays a fundamental role in the theory of integral equations, as many integral operators are compact, in particular those that arise from Hilbert-Schmidt operators. The general spectral theorem for self-adjoint operators involves a kind of operator valued riemann stilchis integral, rather than an infinite summation. The spectral family associated to T associates to each real number λ an operator E λ, which is the projection onto the null space of the operator T minus λ, plus, where the positive part of a self-adjoint operator is defined by A plus equals 1 2 A 2 plus A. Display style a carrot plus equals tfrac one two left sqrt a carrot two plus a right. The operators e lambda are monotone, increasing relative to the partial order defined on self-adjoint operators. The eigenvalues correspond precisely to the jump discontinuities. One has the spectral theorem, which asserts t equals r lambda d E lambda display style t equals int underscore math bound r lambda mathrm d e underscore lambda. The integral is understood as a Riemann Stilchis integral convergent with respect to the norm on B H. In particular, one has the ordinary scalar valued integral representation t x y equals r lambda 
d e lambda x y display style langle tx y wrangle equals int underscore math bound r lambda math from d langle e underscore lambda x y wrangle a somewhat similar spectral decomposition holds for normal operators, although because the spectrum may now contain non-real complex numbers, the operator valued Stilchus measured a lambda must instead be replaced by a resolution of the identity. A major application of spectral methods is the spectral mapping theorem, which allows one to apply to a self-adjoint operator T any continuous complex function f defined on the spectrum of T by forming the integral f T equals sigma t f lambda d e lambda display style f t equals int underscore sigma t f lambda mathrm d e underscore lambda the resulting continuous functional calculus has applications in particular to pseudo differential operators the spectral theory of unbounded self-adjoint operators is only marginally more difficult than for bounded operators. The spectrum of an unbounded operator is defined in precisely the same way as for bounded operators. Lambda is a spectral value if the resolvent operator R lambda equals T minus lambda minus one display style r underscore lambda equals t lambda caret minus 1 fails to be a well-defined continuous operator the self-adjointness of t still guarantees that the spectrum is real thus the essential idea of working with unbounded operators is to look instead at the resolvent r lambda where lambda is non-real this is a bounded normal operator which admits a spectral representation that can then be transferred to a spectral representation of t itself a similar strategy is used, for instance, to study the spectrum of the Laplace operator, rather than address the operator directly, one instead looks as an associated resolvent such as a Riesz potential or Bessel potential. A precise version of the spectral theorem in this case is Given a densely defined self-adjoint operator T on a Hilbert space H, there corresponds a unique resolution of the identity E on the Borel sets of, such that T X Y equals R lambda D E X Y lambda display style Langle T X Y wrangle equals int underscore math bound R lambda math from D E underscore X Y lambda for all X in D T and Y element of H. The spectral measure E is concentrated on the spectrum of T. There is also a version of the spectral theorem that applies to unbounded normal operators. Topic: In popular culture. Thomas Pynchon introduced the fictional character Sammy Hilbert Space a pun on Hilbert Space in his 1973 novel Gravity's Rainbow. Hilbert Spayus is first described as a, a ubiquitous double agent, and later as at least a double agent. The novel had earlier referenced the work of fellow German mathematician Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorems which showed that Hilbert's program, Hilbert's formalized plan to unify mathematics into a single set of axioms, was not possible. See also Hadamard space Hilbert algebra Hilbert C** module Hilbert manifold Operator theory Operator topologies Rigged Hilbert space Topic remarks equals equals notes <laughs>